And welcome back to Goals on Sunday, where we are joined by Jamie O'Hara. Jamie, just interested, when we were just sitting here in the break, you were just telling me what you've started doing now, recently. Yeah, so obviously I do, the, being a football manager and doing all that stuff, but I do a lot of stuff with the mental health side and the visualisation stuff. So, yeah. um, f you know, I think it's important to always try and push that. Um, mm -hmm. So I do this visualisation stuff now with footballers and my team and obviously trying to be the modern day manager. You've got to yeah. see every side of people's problems because I've been through it all, you know, and yeah. my backstory is ups and downs in my career and on and off the field, you know, antics that I used to get up to. And I see a lot of players now struggling. You see it all the time. These young footballers are under so much scrutiny and have obviously got everything they ever wanted, but yeah. it's in a, such a high pressurised situation. So, yeah, I deal with... Um, I do this mind therapy stuff with the visualizations, talking about your um, visualizing your goals and your setting your goals for your future. And if you visualize it, you materialize. You when know, you say goals, like, you don't mean goals. No, in the back not, of the net. no, yeah, not goals as in scoring goals. So you know, I, I went through a bit of a sticky patch, and you know, I, my career was coming to an end. I couldn't get fit, and I started to think, like, what can I do? I need to mm -hmm. I need to make a change. So I started visualizing, you know being on Sky and yeah. uh, being a football manager and being a coach for some reason, when I sit and visualise, I always visualise, uh, people hope people don't mind me saying this, I visualise being a Sunderland manager. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but my, the guy that I work with always says, as long as it's something that you can visualise and it's something that you feel like could be a great thing for you, yeah. stick with it. So I always visualise being at a stadium of light with yeah. a team and yeah. I'm in, we've got a suit on and, and I do that all the time. And it's funny because since I started doing that, my manager careers took off and my coachings took off and so I always just yeah I try and we're trying to get it into football clubs now and we're trying to push it with young players because I see people like Deli Ali, yeah. you know he's a, a prime example he's had a bit of a bad time get, he's under a lot of scrutiny he's in a high pressurized situation and I just think he's lost his way a little bit and needs to reset some goals and reset his visualization because he he basically done yeah. everything that like he could ever ask. What's your next target? Yeah, you need what to. Are you aiming what's for your then? next target? Yeah. What's the next goal? You know, that's something that I never did. I got very comfortable when mm -hmm. I went to Wolves. I, I stepped into the comfort zone, and as a footballer, there's always someone better than you, and there's always someone who's ready to take your place. Yeah. So if you if you just if you stay there and don't progress, you'll find yourself very quickly slipping. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we do now with um, you know we do all the mind therapy stuff to try and keep pushing yourself and mm -hmm. keep setting new targets. So what sort of response have you had from the players? Unbelievable. It's been really good. So I don't I've started it with. Um, I started at Billericay, you mm -hmm. know, I started at Billericay since I've become the manager, I've got two or three of my players, you know, because um, a lot of the players at my, uh, at my uh, team, they have jobs and they have outside of work stuff, so I don't see them all the time. So I, I get them to come to me and ask me about things and if they're not happy off the pitch, how can I help them? You know, I think that's the, the modern day way of doing things. Yeah. So it's been great, you know, some, some of the lads suffer with anxiety and trying to get better in games and what can they do more and so just helping them visualise stuff and all that so that's interesting if they open up to you because I, you know, I know exactly what it's like and yeah. men talking to men or talking to anybody is never an easy thing it's always it's always been a bit of a stigma and it's obviously changing now you know it's getting better but I still think more clubs can help um, and that's why I want to push it out to you know, other, uh, you know, if it's, even if it's under 23s, you know, into mm -hmm. some Premier League teams, into Championship teams, go in because they can kind of relate to me because I've been there, I've done it, yeah. I've had the ups, I've had the downs, mm -hmm. um, and it's great because the other guy that I work with, who is, you know, is a master at all the, the sort of the meditation stuff and the visualizations and how to do it, yeah. um, it's a it's a great thing, and I really think that it can help benefit the young players who are struggling with, you know, mental health and. Do you wish you would have had to. this when you were? Playing? Oh, I wish so much honestly it was I, I I went through real bad stage and didn't want to talk hid everything didn't speak to anyone at the football club because as a player you always think I don't want to tell the manager don't or I, yeah, I don't want them to yeah. think that you know I, I've got a weakness yeah. you know I've got a, you know, I don't can't tell anyone uh, and then you wouldn't tell the players because you know players would jump on it and be like oh he's weak you know people mm -hmm. is so I, I, now I think it's man changed up, that used to be yeah, the term, or that, oh, it? man yeah. up get on with it yeah. but you know that's mm. that's yeah. not the case you mm. know people are struggling and people suffer in silence you know and I think it's just such a think that's sad why thing it was such a big thing to hear Danny Rose come out and talk about when he was struggling yeah. and what he really went through yeah amazing and yeah. it's the more people that can open up and the more people that can be honest about it the, the, the more it becomes less of a stigma. And I just yeah. think it's great now because people are starting to realise that there are, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, 
you can mm -hmm. still be depressed or you can still have problems off the pitch and not be happy and you know everyone just sees footballers you see all these stars playing for England you just see them for 90 minutes on a football pitch you don't know what's going on in their lives mm -hmm. outside of football and they could be struggling there could be things going on yeah. and that's why you know I want to work with you know we work with all athletes but footballers specifically for me because I can relate to them in pushing you know them to keep pushing themselves and finding visualizations to keep working and keep progressing as footballers and you know keep setting new targets to keep improving.